Okay, so this is the outline of my today talk. So probably I will skip about uh, the introduction of perovskite solar cells. So, so next uh, topic of my talk will be uh, whole transporting material. And uh, among whole transport materials, we will be talking about um, uh, the uh, organic small molecules as whole transport material, which could be based on different uh, uh, building blocks and that, that could be dope and free or the dope materials. And if I have some uh, more time, then I will be talking about the development of the speed type uh, hydrophobic dopants, uh, which can be used not only for the whole transport materials, but for the other organic uh, semiconductor materials. So um, uh, with just a brief introduction about the Prosky solar cells that uh, um, uh, we are using is um, that uh, it is a mineral and that uh, the, it can be denoted by ABX3, where A and BX are the cations and X in case of photovoltaic uh, application, X uh, can be uh, halide, different halides like iodide and bromide. And the most performing proskite, which we have been using in our lab, are the based on the pure cations like MABBI3, FAPBI3, or the mixture of these cations and the uh, inorganic halide anions. So uh, here I have shown the uh, cross sectional SEM image of the mesoscopic uh, NIP proskite solar cell, which, uh, which shows actually the best performing. Um, uh, efficiency and also if you look uh, at the right side uh, in the schematic um, uh, diagram of the cells, we can see that uh, perovskite uh, uh, <clears throat> can uh, not only absorb the light, but it can also transport electron and hole uh, to the respective electrode. So this is one of the unique optoelectronic properties of the perovskite uh, itself, uh, and we call it the ambipolar charge transport, which means that it can transport hole at, uh, at itself and also the hole to the um, through the whole transport material to the cathode. So it means that uh, we don't need any extra layer of whole transport material or electron transporting material. But um, if we don't use the whole transport material, then uh, the efficiency could be decreased. So without whole transport materials, uh, we have achieved around 10 to 12% efficiency. But to facilitate the higher charge extractions and to improve the efficiency, it's mandatory to use extra whole transporting layer and electron transporting layer. So um, this unique uh, uh, ambipolar properties of the perovskite solar cells enables a diversity of the different device architectures. And it can have from mesoporous and IP, which is originated basically from the um, uh, solid state disensterized solar cells where we have used, where we use the mesos mesoporous layer of titanium dioxide. And then we have the perovskite uh, followed by the whole transport material and the metal contact. So in this case, the electron transporting material which we used is uh, TiO2 or we could use also tin oxide and the whole transport material, which is the most commonly used is the spiroomitad, which is an organic whole transporting small molecule, or it could be a, a organic uh, polymer such as PTA. So the other possible configuration could be uh, 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 the similar one, but the planar one without mesoporous layer. And uh, the third one, which is most common also, and also originated from the um, organic solar cells, uh, which co we call it inverted planar, where a whole transport material is deposited on trans uh, TCO, like FTO or ITO on the transparent conducting oxide instead of ETM. So in this case, the whole transport material could be the P.PSS, either or uh, the other polymer like PTA or some thalocyanin. And ETM could be this, uh, like fullerene or PCBM in similar way like an organic solar cell. So however, the um, uh, all configuration have achieved high efficiency, but is still the mesoporous uh, NIP or the planner um, uh, have won the race in this uh, configuration. So, um, so, <clears throat> so here I show that the, for any technology which has to bring into the market, we have some three, like three targets or the three pillars like the low cost, high efficiency, and high stability. So in case of perovskite solar cells, so we already achieved high efficiency up to 25.5%. And also the perovskite itself are uh, having a lower cost. But this is not only the perovskite. Perovskite is comprised of several layers and there are different components which are equally or more or less important, not only for the efficiency increment, but also for the stability of the perovskite solar cells. So one of the main important factor itself is the perovskite and uh, the stability of perovskite uh, can be overcome by making the 2D, uh, uh, 2D proskite, the layer proskite as shown by the Professor Nazir, uh, Nazir Dean. And uh, the other thing is uh, <clears throat> um, the electron transporting layer, the ETM. 
So um, uh, until now, we uh, not we all the most of the researchers have been using the TiO2 as an electron transporting material. But the problem with this ETM is that uh, it is um, uh, under illumination and under UV light is unstable and it creates oxygen vacancy as, as just recently uh, now just shown by the Professor Morton. Okay, so um, to avoid this uh, TiO2, what now researchers have been replacing this TiO2 by the tin oxide itself or uh, modification of this tin oxide by different dopant. So tin oxide has the advantage that it's uh, UV stable and also it's high elect uh, the electron mobility is much, much higher than the TiO2. And uh, the third component, which we can also improve um, the stability of prescribed solar cell that moisture resistant and capsulation agent. So um, uh, like we are also working on different polymers which can be, um, which can polymerize over the surface of the perovskite and uh, which can also work as a whole transport material and also uh, could be uh, moisture resistant as also uh, shown by the professor Nazir that such some ionic liquid can be polymerized itself on the perovskite which could improve the stability and also the performance of the solar cells. So, and the fourth thing which comes and which I'm going to talk about is the whole transporting material. So uh, presently we, what we are using um, uh, for the whole transport material, uh, uh, they are not stable because um, they need uh, dopants, okay? And uh, they are also high, high, uh, high, they are not cost effective. They are uh, not uh, UV stable and also they are, um, <coughs> sorry. They need also the dopant. So uh, in this direction, we are working um, since uh, 2012, and we have been uh, making several uh, different types of whole transport materials, which are uh, some of them can be used uh, without dopant, and some some has to need dopant. So here. Um, I have shown you that different types of electron, uh, sorry, whole transporting material can be used. Either they can be uh, pure inorganic uh, p-type semiconductors such as uh, copper iodide, nickel iodide. And uh, the another category comes about the organic, say p-type organic semiconductors. And that can be divided into two types like uh, based on the polymers such as the P3ST, PTA, P-dot, or the small molecules such as the triazotrexine, tripentacine, or uh, also the organic modular complex like a thalosine. I mean, but if we look uh, in this curve, so it's still the, the organic um, P-type semiconductor uh, based whole transport materials um, has always uh, been in front runner in, uh, as a, um, to improve the efficiency. So there are always uh, some pros and cons of uh, different types of materials. So in case of inorganic type, inorganic P-type semiconductors, there is a limited choice of the materials, one thing. And the another thing is that um, uh, besides, um, uh, <coughs> uh, they show actually the high hole mobility and uh, they can be used without any dopant and they have also higher thermal and stability, but uh, it's still um, uh, the problem is that they need uh, high temperature processing and also, uh, if they deposit uh, over the perovskite, like in NIP configuration, they co they could uh, dissolve the perovskite because uh, because of the common solvent use. So um, some of them are a good uh, candidate for the PIN heterojection, but for the NIP, they are not good candidates. So in case of the polymer polymeric STM or the P type. Uh, uh, um, uh, for example, this uh, PTA that that is also shown a very nice efficiency and uh, stability, but the problem is also again it's a um, uh, high high cost, and uh, um, uh, it's, it's actually uh, in the cost it's actually more uh, <laughs> uh, uh, higher expensive than the, this is pyrometidad. And also the problem is that it's a batch to batch. Uh, they have the irreproducibility. They cannot have the same type of material. Uh, in different batches, and also the, it has a really cumbersome purification, which uh, which makes uh, these type of materials uh, less uh, <clears throat> important in case of whole transport material. So here we comes with the small molecules whole transport material, which has the several uh, several advantage that it can be uh, easily uh, easily synthesized in one or two steps, and uh, some molecules can be purified easily, so they can be cost effective. And also you can, uh, they are the mono in nature. So we don't have any problem with the reproducibility. And um, by molecular engineering, we can uh, easily tune their energy levels. So um, as I told you about that whole transfer material, we, we can use um, uh, perovskite solar cells. Where we can fabricate without whole transfer material. But um, uh, if we have this whole transfer material over the surface, over the um, uh, perovskite surface, 
not it's not only um, ex, uh, transport the hose but it also works as a physical barrier between perskite and cathode and also it uh, blocks the electron from from the etm layer uh, to the to the cathode and um, the the most important thing that uh, if it is amorphous in nature it can also uh, so make smooth films which can protect uh, perskite from moisture and oxygen so uh, keeping these things in mind uh, we have some <clears throat> uh, some uh, properties which which should be uh, present in any type of whole transport material. So the first thing is um, the first physical property which should be present in all types of whole transport material. It's the so high solubility. We should be uh, in orthogonal solvent means that it should not dissolve the proskite. And uh, the another thing which is important to to take into to consideration is the energy level. So the the homo the higher highest occupied molecular orbital should be a little bit higher than the the proskite valence band. And the other thing is that uh, for that um, to transport the facilitate whole transportation we should have high mobility of this whole transport materials and the gas transition temperature should be very high and for um, pin junction uh, there is uh, we, we need to have this whole transport material in um, um, uv range absorption so that it means that it will uh, optically transparent um, and also it will not hamper the optical absorption with the perovskite and the most important thing is um, to bring it in the market, it should be cost effective and it, it should be easy to scale up. So mm -hmm. with that, I would like to show you that um, until, until now, the most common um, uh, whole transport materials in case of uh, NIP per sky solar cell is a spiromethad. And uh, why it is using? Because it has most of the desired property, which should be in, uh, in SGM, except that it's a uh, poor electrical properties. So um, uh, to make it a uh, good uh, electrical um, I mean, to make it uh, more conductive and to have its high mobility, we need to uh, to use some dopants uh, such as cobalt complex and lithium at TFSI or tertiary butyl protein. And by using this dopant, uh, the, the conductivity of this STM increases several orders of magnitude and also it improves the whole mobility. But on the other hand, uh, the hygroscopic nature of these dopants uh, uh, accelerate the degradation of the perovskite, and also this TBP uh, basically combined with the with the perovskite iodine and make some iodopredinate complex. So uh, in um, in short, that uh, if we use these all three three tri the tri dopants, uh, then um, the the perovskite stability uh, decreases. Um, itself. So uh, the other problem with this is pyrometer, it, it's a uh, high, high cost. Why it's high cost? Because uh, it needs a multi-step synthesis. And to get high purity, we need to, we need to have also many steps to purify it at sublimation grade. And uh, presently, the, the, the cost of this uh, material is around 300 euro per gram, um, if you buy from the Sigma Aldrig. And so which makes actually more than 25% of the total cost of the cellular cell. And because of so because of these doping, uh, so one is the elevated cost of this material, and the other thing is uh, reduced stability due to presence of these doping. So that's the reason why we would like to work more uh, synthesis and designing of new whole trans material, which we and we are more focused on uh, preparing some more cost effective materials. And so that's why in the search of that um, alternative whole transport material, we found uh, some some uh, linear acine, which is known as um, uh, tips pentacene, which this is basically not new uh, uh, p-type organic semiconductor. It has been basically used uh, uh, in a field effect transistor where we need a high mobility, high charge mobility. So we thought that uh, this mo molecule could be a good candidate to replace the spirometer. And um, uh, it shows a remarkable um, uh, remarkable efficiency at that time when we uh, we were working in 2015 and uh, and we, we can see that it, this uh, this tips pentacene has um, high stability even compared to the spirometer favorable energy levels and the, the most important thing is that it can be used without any further dopant so in in the dopant like in a pristine form uh, the efficiency uh, could be reached around 12 percent using uh, mapi and uh, which was uh, compared to um, the, our the control device uh, using spirometer gives us the 10 percent so uh, with this um, uh, motivation we we um, uh, electrical properties and we found that uh, this tries a truthine based 
materials where this three, there are three indole units which are connected with this phenol ring. And uh, we, because why we choose this material? Because this is more flammable and it has the extended de de delocalization of the pi electron. So that in, in, in this way, it, it doesn't need external dopant to increase its um, electrical conductivity or mobility. And what we did, because this material, uh, the only disadvantage of this material is that it cannot be solved. This is not soluble, so it can be only used by the evaporation method. So we did some collaboration with uh, Professor ba uh, Hang Bolling in Valencia, and uh, we prepared this in um, PI injection because uh, almost a transparent, so it's it's a perfect uh, perfect materials to use in the PI injection inverted pl planar junction. So what we found that when we use uh, this TBDI uh, without any further um, interface material, we get some S-shaped curve, which means that there is some energy barrier between the pers uh, uh, like um, to to transport holes from perovskite to to the um, uh, to the um, cathode. So uh, then, what we did, uh, we we use MO3 as an interfacial layer uh, between the ITO and the TBI, and we found that uh, after adding this MO3, we improved the efficiency up to 15 percent, and uh, also the 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 fill factor uh, improved. It means that this this um, MO3 works as a interfacial modifier and also probably could work as a dopant. To, to bring the Fermi level of this material to, towards down um, and to facilitate faster whole ex extractions. Further um, uh, using this material, um, and now here is uh, actually the good example of doing the molecular engineering of this material. So as we st I told you that that material was not soluble, so we cannot use in, um, uh, in solution process device. So what we did that we, we, we have uh, modified this material, this basic core of this material and we added some pendant uh, um, uh, alkoxy group. Uh, this is uh, like a hexyloxy group, uh, which then, and we prepared two different materials by adding one phenoxy group and one here hexyloxy group. And so it is called HPDI and HMDI. And we can see that the, uh, by doing this, we also tune the energy levels. So in case of uh, HPDI, which has uh, better energy levels and uh, lower energy barrier with respect to perovskite, gives around um, nine per, around 10, almost 10% efficiency and with dopant, it improve a little bit. But in case of HMDI, which has actually high energy barrier between um, the perovskite and HMDI, uh, we got around 8.6%. So from what we learned here that um, to get a better in performance, it's very important to tune the energy level with respect to perovskite. And if we have um, a, a energy, big energy difference between the perovskite and the HOMO level of the whole transport material, it affects the performance. So by, um, again, uh, just continue with this uh, triazotruene based uh, molecule. We further modified and we further adding different pentane group on this uh, core chain. And we found that we adding, if we add more phenoxy group over this um, uh, main core, we further, can, uh, further uh, we can tune the energy level by just doing methoxy group tailoring. And from 8.6% of this HMDI, uh, which we achieved if in case of HMDI, the efficiency could uh, uh, reach up to 18%. So in, the, uh, and with the same uh, perovskite, and this energy level is uh, almost similar to, to the perovskite, uh, sorry, uh, to the spiro, and also the efficiency even is higher uh, than uh, the spiro. The in case of spiro, we got around uh, 17.9, while in case of this HMPDI, we got a, around 18.3 percent. So, uh, the, so these things uh, we showed that by by using these organic molecules, if we do some different type of uh, molecular trailing on the side groups, we could achieve or um, we could change the energy levels, and we could also uh, improve the performance. Further following this um, work, then we, we tried some different uh, triphenylamine based HGM. And um, because it's also, uh, um, so we also developed uh, some triphenylamine based whole transfer material. And we could see that how the molecular interaction at interface play an important role. So we developed this uh, uh, terthiophene and triphenylamine based molecules. And if you look here, that um, the efficiency in uh, what we achieved here is, is around 8%. But so what we did, we, we, we did some molecular trailing on the group and we add some methoxy group. And uh, what we found that after adding the um, different um, methoxy group, the efficiency could uh, reach up to 15%. 
So from this, we learned that um, if we can uh, play with the with the uh, decide group and we could add a methoxy group or alkoxy group, so we could uh, not only uh, tune the energy levels, but also we, we improve the interfacial properties between the perovskite and STM layer. So uh, further, we, we developed uh, the, uh, another uh, type of core uh, materials based on cyclopentadiphene. And uh, the important thing in this type of cold transfer material is that uh, they are cost effective and the yield is very high. So we could uh, actually achieve high yield around 80% uh, in case of the CDTH1, we call it, without uh, having the hexyl chain. But, and when we add here to ethyl hexyl chain, the yield could be a little bit uh, decrease, and uh, but it's still it's, it's still comparatively it's higher than the spirometad and the other triazotrin based uh, stream. And um, what we did, we tried uh, these two molecules uh, with two types of perovskite, with MAPI and uh, with a mixed perovskite, mixed cation halide perovskite. And um, uh, we found that um, uh, with using the, with the MAPI perovskite, the high efficiency could be achieved. And in case of this uh, ethyl hexyl group, the efficiency was higher than this without alkyl. Why? Because uh, this hexyl actually, this uh, hexyl chain uh, helps to, to uh, improve the solubility and also uh, to, uh, to, to make um, better film, prop, uh, film forming. So uh, like also, we, if you look at the energy levels, uh, we look here that this hexyl based uh, um, STM has better energy levels compared to uh, um, uh, with respect to MAPI than to mixed halide, because if you look uh, mixed perovskite, it has big energy barrier between uh, perovskite and the whole transporting materials. So another thing what we uh, to check uh, by whole tracks extraction by the PL, steady stale PL measurements. And we could see that in case of uh, this ethyl hexyl based STM, we had higher quenching than this uh, without hexyl chain. It means that this hexyl chain based STM has better hole extraction from perovskite than without hexyl. So uh, this, mo this molecule is actually basically uh, it's very interesting and um, that it can have also um, high yield and it, it is also very easy to step method to prepare these materials. Um, this we also developed some carbocell, uh, but I will just skip this now. Um, and just recently, we, we got um, this interesting uh, pyridine based uh, whole transporting materials, which could have actually two functions. Uh, besides transporting the whole, and uh, they, they can also work as passivating molecules or, or for the perovskite because they have this uh, nitrogen group. This in the pyridine, this, this is a nitrogen group which uh, which works as a Lewis base, so which can basically passivate, passivate the defects on the perovskite surface. So by using um, uh, this uh, pridin core and uh, using this uh, arm uh, based on the carbazole group, we make two different types of two different types of whole transport material. We just change the position of these two two, uh, two carbazole arms, and we found that uh, in 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 uh, principle they should have the same uh, property what we expect, but it was not uh, the case. In case of two six, we get the better results because it has the better uh, uh, charge uh, transfer properties from donor to acceptor. In, uh, than the three five base and also if you look in the films uh, this is the uh, film whole transport material fill over the proskite which is more smoother than this three five base volume uh, three three five base stms and also uh, the um, the electrical uh, properties of this two six um, stm was better than this three five based stm as you, you look here that the conductivity as well as the whole mobility was higher in case of two six based stm than three five base and uh, the most important thing of this whole transport material is that the cost. The cost is around 28 euro per gram, which is quite uh, 10 times maybe lower than the, the spirometad. So this type of uh, materials are really promising and we are, which we are still working to improve the, the efficiency. So then we use the, these materials for, um, for NIP based device using the tin oxide as in VTM layer. And uh, we found that in case of this two six based perovskite, we could uh, get 18% uh, efficiency, while for 3.5 based, we could get 16% efficiency. In case of this 2.6, we also don't have any hysteresis, which means that we also passivate uh, the molecules uh, efficiently. So <clears throat> one more thing, important thing, which I would like to tell you that when we use the same materials in PI injunction, the efficiency get dropped. So, and uh, in case of 2.6, uh, the efficiency, we, the maximum efficiency which we achieved is 10%, while in case of 3.5, it was a 10%. And, uh, 
okay so and the stability was almost uh, uh, it, it was um, uh, better than the the spiro in case of 26 then uh, also uh, 35 based so another molecule which we are uh, we we recently um, published is based on the thalocyanin zinc thalocyanin and uh, th this thalocyanin is basically is very uh, robust and uh, uh, they are very air stable and the the best thing is that they can be used without any external dopants and um, the most important thing that uh, their uh, electrical conductivity is much much higher than the spiro and also the whole mobility is uh, better than the spiro so, so what, what we did we, what what we, we used the uh, 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 it is um, uh, mesoporous and IP uh, proskai solar cells, and uh, uh, without any external dopant, we have achieved high efficiency around uh, 14 by 5 percent. And uh, if you look here, that we could see that it is the uh, the pristine spiro means the undoped spiro compared to uh, undoped spiro, we have got around 15 percent efficiency. And if you look here, that we, we saw very thin layer compared to spiro. In, in case of a spiro, we need around 150 nanometer of uh, thicker layer. While in case of this uh, zinc thalocyanin base, we need around 15 nanometer, which is sufficient to give this efficiency. So uh, this molecule is not only uh, stable, but also uh, it is uh, cost effective and it's easy to synthesize. Uh, do we have some time more? A couple of minutes, a couple of minutes. Just, I just want to introduce one more thing uh, that, uh, that we have developed also some hydrophobic P-type dopants to, to improve the stability and the efficiency of the solar cells. And um, so what it, it, it can do that, so it can actually replace this tri-component dopants by just using one single uh, ionic liquid based uh, uh, dopant and it has several advantages that it can work as a p-type dopant additive it is hydrophobic it, it increases the conductivity and it can reduce the charge combinations and also uh, it improves the film formation so um i think i should skip or uh, can i continue yeah please uh, please okay. skip this okay so uh by just doing this using this dopant uh, we we could achieve high efficiency uh, compared to, to um, conventional dopants, and you can see that uh, using the uh, the optimum amount of this dopant, we can achieve the similar efficiency uh, like a, a conventional dopant around 15%, and here we achieve the 14%. And um, the main main important thing is the stability, as we can see that without uh, use uh, with the conventional dopant, we uh, we have. Um, uh, um, uh, low low stability while compared to the this dopant we got the high uh, stability and it, it was actually uh, uh, used for uh, almost for seven months uh, um, we put in outside in a, uh, around 80 percent of the humidity and um, they were on encapsulated devices so uh, they, as to show that they are hydrophobic also in the nature, you can see that um, when we have this um, uh, hydrophobic dopant over the spiro, the contact angle increases in case of um, this dopant, while in case of the conventional dopant, uh, we have uh, less hydrophobicity. So I would just skip for now the slides. And the, finally, on my conclusion is that the, the cyclopentothiophene-based STM can have potential to exhibit high PCE. Also, this pridine code based STM shows a new class of STM and can have two fold functions to extract uh, holes efficiently, and they, they can also passivate the perovskite. And uh, also, of course, dopant free STM can be designed by molecular engineering. Uh, for dopant free STM, what we need, we should have extended pi conjugation uh, in central core, and also the cofocial pi pi stacking is a prerequisite to facilitate the charge transport. And furthermore, the molecular interaction between perovskite and STM. Interface play an important role to achieve stable and efficient for sky solar cell. Further, ionic liquid are suitable candidates not as a, um, as hydrophobic dopant for whole transfer material, and also they can be used as a encapsulating agent for for sky solar cell. With that, I would like to thank um, all my collaborators and my group and all of you who were listening patiently with me. Thank, thank you very, you very much. much.